Ready. Right. Action Jackson. Remote key lock. I, uh, I used uh, Perfect Key Lock. Right? Nice little program. The first thing you do after installing is you need to set some settings because the settings actually carry over to the remote installation. So you're not going to want it to show up on, you're going to want in invisibility and you're going to want it to run on startup and you don't want it to be in their program files and stuff like that. So you have to set those up. You're going to need an FTP because you want to get the logs remotely. You're not going to want to go to their computer to get the logs. The whole point of the spying is <coughs> they won't know. So you set your FTP. You give them their own little account just in case they can uh, get into it because you are giving them access to this FTP. And you lock that into their directory, which is just logs, so they can just add write logs. You can't read logs. They just write logs there. Once that's set, you uh, create a package. Here I added it to Visual SVN. A lot of people will just install stuff if you give it to them. And as you see, it looks exactly the same. And it um, notifies me immediately as soon as they install. And it puts it in CSVN, which is a believable folder. Not really, but believable enough for the testing. And this is when they run it. it. They do install Visual SVN. They actually install the program. It comes with it. You can do it to any installer. Uh, Visual SVN just happens to be the right length for me so that uh, the background processes can complete while it's installing. If you don't want to do something like a really small program where it's going to not be able to finish. And as you see right here, this is the actual installation in the CSVN. Uh, That's the virus. And it's labeled BPK. You can name it anything you want during in your settings when you originally make it, um, which is going to be important for the detection, which is the later steps, because they, they can see some of the stuff. So these are the text documents that are created when they have installed, saying that it's working. And here are some logs that you can get. You can see uh, what video they watched on DLC. You can see what they uh, typed in Explorer. They created a blah. And they typed in the blah. And over here, they typed into a test. It also does web pages, screenshots, and everything else. And this is the detection. Now, it's although you can hide it from these two places, there are other places you can't hide it from. But this is the, you know, a regular user might be able to find it depending on what you've named it. If you named it, hey, this is a keylogger, when they go into here, if they check their processes, a lot of people don't, but one of the ways to really be sure that you don't have a keylogger is to actually know what processes are running on your system and be aware of what you've done and what you haven't done. If you're, if you, if you're not aware, then anything can run. So. Mm -hmm. That someone just added in and installed. And these are the ones that uh, it doesn't get hidden from. And that's the registry and the uh, MS config. Also, Comcast can tell you if you have one. <laughs> if you leave your internet on when you're doing tests. And Button. that's about it. The key logger. You can do a lot of stuff once you key log someone, you can do almost anything you want. You have depends on what information you collected. Nice topic. Now, here's a question for you. If it's your computer, let's suppose you own two computers. Yes. And you let a friend of yours use that computer, but you've installed the key logger. It actually has a setting where you can key log your own computer. Right. And you can set target applications. And you can monitor if someone else is doing something on your computer. Oh. It's like a security precaution. Well, you might want to monitor your kid's computer, right? That's a good idea. And, well, a good idea is a debatable <laughs> issue, but, uh, but you know, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer, but... Well, speak for yourself, but uh, be careful what you wish for, sweetheart. But uh, the thing about it is, what I heard is, and I'm not a lawyer, but I heard that if, you, if it's your equipment, like I can put spyware on my wife's phone if I own the phone. If it's my account, it's not illegal for me to put it. It's, oh, here, honey, you've got a phone, right? Yeah. And now I can watch all of her calls from my internet or whatever. 
<laughs> well, depends. <laughs> Phones in my name, so I don't know if it is. Any. But anyway, uh, you know what I'm saying? So that yeah. if it's your computer, maybe you could do that legally and use, it, use it for a quote-unquote good why purpose. That's can actually like, have this application. They can sell it and stuff. I can pay for it, but you can, you oh, can sell I see. it. So there are legal uses there for it. There are legal it. uses for it, but there are also, you know, there's stealth installation. Right. So free cell phones for everybody. Free, cell phones for everybody <laughs> free computers for everybody. Yeah. One way to combat uh, key loggers is uh, if you're using a computer that you don't suspect is safe, like, uh, for example, uh, internet cafes in Iran, the yeah, drones pretty much uh, assure that there's key loggers on them. So activists that want to get by that, um, they use on-screen keyboards. Because uh, usually key loggers don't detect that. So if you suspect Ooh, good that it's not exactly safe and you absolutely have to log into like your bank or something like that. If your options are limited, one way to be a little more safe is to use an on-screen keyboard and click your way through. What it uh, does to combat that is it has a screenshot on click option where it takes a picture for every click. Right, there's also mouse that, that suddenly makes the uploads a lot yeah, bigger. You're gonna and it is still a problem, <laughs> but that's that's the thing. Like I know like if you're logging into a lot of like, like MyPay, you have to use an on-screen keyboard for your password. It won't let you type it in. But there are you mouse loggers. Do you have a MyPay account? Are you former? I'm a reserve Like, stuff like that okay. exists. So, yeah, I was going to say. And it's for, like, those kind of reasons that they have those kind of settings on here. Cool. Nice going. One more question. Oh, sorry. Um, so, you have to type in your password and username in order for this thing to log you. Like a login. You can't just. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of websites you automatically have your password saved, so. Would I ever catch that? Like, well, no, I didn't test that because I, I normally type in my stuff. I don't have them saved. Right. Good uh, question. It seemed like it might because of something I noticed in the uh, right here where it says the program VLC. It says password captured. Nope, because there's no password for VLC. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it did, that's where it would be. But I did not test that. So. For sure. All right. Mission accomplished. Maybe. Right.